I saw the photo you put on in, on LinkedIn. It was quite bemusing that a man of your stature should be working under the stairs at a time like this. <laughs> <laughs> it fills us all with hope. A number of people commented on that and thought it was pretty funny. I mean, how do you, how do you manage your operations from a, a nerve centre like this at a time like this? It, it's actually surprisingly straightforward. Um, I'm busier than I've ever been. Uh, and I mean, we, we, we bought Koiron from my basement. We're launching new product lines from my basement. We're, you know, it's, uh, we're having all of our meetings and everything else. It, it's worked pretty well. The acquisitions carry on despite a pandemic. Despite a pandemic, yeah. And uh, who knows, there may be more, more going on simultaneously as well. If you're in a good financial position, a, a downturn can, uh, can be an opportunity. Let me go back to April. It was a month ago, believe it or not, but um, it seems a lot longer than that now. April's famous for two things on the uh, David Ross calendar. First, it's your birthday that month. How secondly, you have a little show in Las Vegas. Yes, I've heard about that show. Not having any B is a tremendous loss. There, there's nothing like going out to supper uh, with your, your favorite customers. Uh, there's something as well for a customer to see how busy your stand is and, and to see how many other people are on that stand and see how enthusiastic they are about what you're doing. It, it, it changes the perception than just marketing in a web page. I don't know how exactly you can duplicate that, those sorts of feelings uh, that exist in a trade show. But from the point of view of being able to do them virtually, it turns out that only a small percentage of our customers can actually go to the show. A lot of them are still just going to your website and hearing what other people had to say. So when we would launch a product with a webinar, we'd have hundreds and hundreds of people on the webinar and hours of questions, you know, uh, coming back in. And I guess they could see how many people were on the webinar. That's sort of like a, a busy stand at a trade show. When we've been able to do things like demonstrate robotics virtually like how yeah how do you do that i think another thing is at any b like products have their own life cycles product lines have their own life cycles and any b is an artificial deadline and what you what you see in a company is is some products being almost waiting for the show other ones landing right on the show perfectly and other ones stretch goal you're showing the products but they might be, they, there's a chance they might drift a little bit outside of the window of what you really want to do for when you're announcing a product. But any becomes once a year. IBC is another opportunity, but they, it, it gets tricky. I came two years ago nearly to your Ottawa operation. You've got several operations uh, around North America. How have things started again? Have you revamped manufacturing again? Right after uh, the North American March break, the province of Ontario here in Canada uh, had a uh, a mandatory shutdown. That's when they they really did the lockdown, and we were we already knew that we were uh, a critical manufacturer and that we had the right to stay open. Uh, but we decided to, in solidarity with the province and uh, for our employees, we did a voluntary shutdown for two weeks. Uh, I think it was good as well because it gave our employees time to get you know their lives in order and understand that uh, that things are going to change. But it also gave us time in the factory uh, for the management side of things to rejig everything for for uh, for uh, social distancing. So we went from having two shifts, you know, eight hours in the in the morning, eight hours in the afternoon and evening, to uh, two sets of twelve-hour shifts, three on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and that allowed us to do more disinfecting. It allowed us to to create definitely two distinct crews. We put one-way aisles down. We put in barriers. We put in uh, propped open the washroom doors uh, so that you would have less contact, uh, and uh, and we we restricted quite strongly access to the factory. I haven't been to the factory. Uh, uh, since the lockdown at all. I haven't been in my office once since the lockdown. It was a steep learning curve looking back on that. You couldn't sort of take a cut and paste template of putting in those screens and splitting the shifts. You had to learn all this on the fly. We have some really, really good people. Uh, uh, they're, they're, and there's some some heroes as well in, in the company for the pandemic and uh, probably near the top of the list is our human resources department. In some ways, we did a trust fall uh, in senior management on, on everything that, that, that HR was suggesting. We went, okay, everything, great, done. We'll just do it, you know, and, and, uh, and it, it turned out, it, it felt a little aggressive in some ways. Some of the things we we're doing, it was a little ahead of the curve. Uh, but 
I know that our employees really appreciated it. I've made comparisons with yourself and Thomas Riedel fairly or unfairly in the past because you're both similar sized companies. You've both acquired a lot of other smaller companies and integrated them into the, the Ross of the Riedel way. And you exchanged socks last year, I think. And, uh, and both start with the letter R, yes. <laughs> How do you manage all those stuff? You, obviously, you break it down. You have other senior managers, but how do you keep in communication with you, with everybody here? We're used to um, finding ways of of bringing the remote staff in into the into the fold, and we've been doing that many, many for many years. You can argue that getting to the pandemic so that everybody is now remote staff. We just took those technologies, and and everybody was suddenly on the same playing field, and now. You know, we're, we're using, you know, Zoom type technology. We're using Microsoft Teams and everybody is remote. Everybody, you can see everybody's faces. I swear it's working better from the point of view of communication. Now, in, in, in fact, one of the things I, 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 I was starting to do um, before the, the, uh, the, the pandemic is lunch with Dave. So, you know, I'd have a big table in my office and we'd have five people together and we'd, we'd have lunch and we'd just chat and catch up. And I got to know a lot of people in the surrounding buildings from where I was working. And that was nice. And I didn't even really think about, well, I can't have lunch with people in Australia or Europe, you know, so I'll catch up with them at trade shows or if I visit someday. Now I have uh, coffee with Dave uh, and uh, I do that tw twice a week. And we're mixing people from Europe and North America and, and all over the world. And I, I had one with Australia. It worked great. I am meeting in a better way, more people in my company, more fairly than I ever did before the pandemic. I mean, tell me, I mean, it sounds like you, you seem to be thriving during this pandemic. I mean, what have you learned most over the last couple of months, David? Back in uh, like 2008, just before the financial meltdown, I actually gave a uh, speech uh, to a, a group here in Ottawa and it was about how to survive a downturn. And one of the things that I was talking about, you know, you, you have to have resiliency and resiliency in many, many ways. Uh, for example, you need to have large and small products, big systems and, and quick things to sell. Because when times are good, people spend money on big systems. When times are bad, they tweak those systems and add to them and augment them. They don't stop doing things, but they do different things. And then the other side of it is having geographic diversity, right? So, so when China was 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 doing very poorly at the start of the year, uh, we were able to balance that with North American European sales. And when North American sales went down, China rushed back up again. I think we're 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 expecting to be maybe fifteen percent off target the second half of the year which I, I think considering the pandemic, oh, no. I think that's really good. Um, and the nice thing is uh, the first half of the year, uh, we were up 30% uh, year over year. So we were having a total blow your mind out year. Uh, when the pandemic hit, we'd actually already made all the profit that we had budgeted for the entire year. To edit this part out because that most people are saying, oh, we're 60% down, we're 70% <laughs> down, you're 30% up and 15% down. It's like this, this, there's going to be some very jealous manufacturers watching this. Sorry about that. Our, our, our actual, the challenge we've laid down for ourselves, and it's going to be close, is whether or not, even with the pandemic by the end of the year, whether we will have grown year over year compared to last year. So how's David entertaining himself? I mean, you've been at home now for 10 weeks. I mean, how's the family with that? They must be loving it. You're always home. I'm always home. You know, it, it's uh, that's one thing I haven't been able to do. Is uh, every other day I seem to be able to uh, walk the dog with my wife in the middle of the afternoon and, and actually see some sunshine. She's having to deal with my uh, my COVID beard as well. I uh, I decided I was going to be uh, uh, not shave for the duration. We'll see how long that lasts. The lack of travel as well. I mean, I used to travel uh, a week a month at least visiting customers and uh, maybe taking a vacation every now and then. And uh, certainly getting the uh, the list of things to do around the house has gone substantially down. It's a different pace, even though I think I'm busier working in my basement, running this company, just meeting after meeting back to back than, um, than I ever was. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I appreciate your time for uh, submitting that to allow us to talk to you because uh... I just want to know how the world of Ross video is going over this downturn. Um, it's been it's very hard for a lot of manufacturers out there, but it's quite reassuring what you're you're good, you're undertaking at the moment. So uh, so well done. I can't complain. 
And I think a lot of it as well as uh, the, the staff here has just uh, just been phenomenal uh, in rising to the occasion and, and uh, modifying how they do. How they, it's not not really a, a completely a top down thing. I mean, I, I just I'm surprised every day from how people have modified the way they do things uh, for the current circumstances, and it's brilliant.